Yes, it is. Our next guest yes, is a legendary is. guitarist. We're very excited to have him on because I, I want to get all about this guitar tone, man. The guitar tones on this record. <laughs> First of all, Start a Fire, Actions specifically, that, oh, we're going to talk all about Color Sound, available oh, July 16th. Goodness. Welcome to the show, Mr. You know what, Mitch? He needs no introduction. I'm not even going to say his name. There he I is. just put my hand in here. There he is. <laughs> Look at him. What Mr. A sexy Billy man. Duffy. You know, I got to say real quick uh, before we get started is that you know, we get a lot of promo stuff sent to us and a lot of it, you, you go, oh, okay, it's nice. And then there are some that just speak to you and grab you by the, you know what? And, and this one grabbed me by the, you know what? These oh, wow. songs are fantastic. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to point out uh, a couple and, and then we'll get to the interview, but right. there's a song called Lightning Strikes. And I, you know, Aerosmith did one back in the day and I thought, okay, is yeah. this a cover? So I listened to it and I was like, wow, yeah, that is great. And then it goes right into a song called Revelation. And I go, Yep. Yeah. That was a revelation. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So, well, Mitch, hold on a second. Oh, Cause yeah. I want to talk all about this, but we have a very special surprise for you. Oh, you're oh, ready let's... for this. Hold on. Here we, go. Here we go. Exclusive this afternoon. It's the there he is. Oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Mickey Curry. There he is. Hey. How you guys oh, get doing, out. Man? Mickey Curry. <laughs> Good <laughs> day. <laughs> Yeah, that is the way to do it. <laughs> there we the, go. Is this the Price is Right? Yes. It, Come it on down. The giveaway. The giveaway, right? The free. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, or is it, uh, or is it the geriatric drummer meeting? Because that's <laughs> what I was clicking on. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> so, geez, I mean, what was the last time you guys talked to each other or seen each other at this point? Billy Duffy. Man. It's yeah. been a, a long time. When, it was probably ever? a bright. Brian Adams gig, maybe yeah. I came to see you guys play one, you know, you might have all been wearing matching denim outfits. I don't know what I, <laughs> yeah, I it might've been this, the suits. We were all wearing suits. Is that? that yeah, right? there was, there was a, there was definitely a theme yeah. on the, uh, well, the outfits, you know, the boss, the boss calls the shots. So yeah, I was, I was, I don't your, know how many guys were okay. left in the band at that point though, Mickey, he was, he keeps shedding musicians. I'm waiting for him to grow a <laughs> bass from out of the back. It's just, yeah. Yeah. At that point, I can't remember. Yeah, it's getting it's getting to that. Maybe I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let me, uh, Mickey. Let me just quickly ask you something uh, while we're talking about Billy. You you got to work with two of the greatest guitarists ever. Keith Scott is an underrated master, and Billy. I don't want to say is underrated because people know. I think him, I'm but... overrated, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Highly overrated. <laughs> I. I definitely, I definitely overrate you, man. Come on, you, you are like way over the top. Yeah, there's, but there's definitely one of the best, it. right? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I remember the first time we actually sort of played together. We were going through the songs up there at Little Mountain, and mm -hmm. uh, your time, just your time, the the chug you got on a just any rhythm guitar part. It blew me away. I didn't have to think about a click. I didn't have to think about the time. I didn't have to worry about, is this picking up or slowing down? Am I on top? Am I behind? And we had those conversations. We had a lot of conversations about that. I remember. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want it? Do you want, you know, am I supposed to be pushing this stuff or do you want me to hold it back? And we talked about all those great, you know, rock drummers that had their way of pushing and pulling, you know, John Bonham and you. Yeah. You brought up Simon Kirk, which uh, ah, Simon. Oh Kirk. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. brought up he's Simon. my hero. Yeah, mine too. And you know, I met him years later, and um, and told him that story about how we were sitting around trying to figure out sort of where we were going to go with these rhythm tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kept mentioning Simon Kirk. Simon Kirk, do that thing. You know, where it's kind of he drops that backbeat just a little bit lazy, a little bit back. Yeah, yeah. And we were you, you'll it. you'll be glad to know that uh, Simon has a band called uh, Lone Rider, and they have a new album coming out later this summer. And uh, management sent me some of the tracks to listen to for my opinion. Guy's not lost a beat. I mean, the uh, guy is just he's incredible, monster. He's incredible. Um, yeah. But Billy, let's quickly, uh, uh, Mickey, you haven't heard this Color Sound Two album. Um, mm. I got to tell you, this thing is spectacular, and and hopefully uh, maybe Billy will send you a link or something to it later because you have to hear this thing. I yeah. mean, the, it it is his tone. Go go ahead, Jerry. Talk about the tone. 
Yeah, you know, I, I talk about this often where there's just a significant lack of tone these days in rock <laughs> records and rock guitar specifically. You know, everybody's using the same plugins, virtual. You know, this sounds like you've got the amp set up and you're micing them and you're just turning them up to 11 and cranking, you know, warming, getting those tubes on fire and getting a tone going. It, yeah, I mean, things have changed for guitar players. It, it, it was much more of a challenge, like when me and Mickey worked together in the late 80s and 90s. They were the first guys who were hot rodding amps. And, you know, I had Harry Colby in New York did mine. And Jose was famous for doing Eddie Van Halen's. And they were basically trying to make amps sound better than they do naturally by doing a few tricks. But then it became almost like people would um, build manufacturers started making amps that sounded good in guitar center mm -hmm. which is like that chainsaw buzzsaw sound where yeah. where you, it was just like one of the vid layers of hell is to go into a guitar center on a saturday morning and hear 23 guitar players all playing everything ever so slightly wrong yes smoke on the water <laughs> through an amp that sounds like razor blade <laughs> yeah you, you know but but that but they're not so bad as to be like scared to go in guitar center they know they can play a little bit <laughs> yes. but they just get it just enough wrong and it's that fake sizzly anyway mm -hmm. so tone i mean i was i was this very morning i was listening to some very early billy gibbons moving sidewalks mm -hmm. and he is the the god of tone yeah i think i don't know what guitar he was on it what I don't, I don't think he owned that pearly gates then but there are guitar players and i think the tone it conveys an emotion and I think that's what you connect with. And I think that, you know, without wanting to get all serious, because I try not to do serious too much, I'm trying to make music that affects people with my guitar playing. And like Mickey was saying about, you know, I mean, I write the music and that music is the kind of my heartbeat as a human being. That If I feel it, and that's what me and Mickey were having those conversations when Mickey came in to play drums on the album, um, the, the, I was trying to explain like what turned me on as a kid, like, you know, the Sex Pistols drumming, um, Free, ba Bad Company, you know, and it was like Simon Kirk. There's a certain, you play the song, you're not playing, you play the song to play the song. Don't play it to impress other drummers. Right. You yeah. know, you know, you know what I mean? There's like a yeah. different, and, yeah. and that, 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 that's kind of where I'm at. And the tone's the same thing. It, it's, it, it became very easy and a lot of guitar amps, were just too kind of saturated and horrible. Does but the plugins are okay. Hey, dude, they, I, I'm going to break your heart though. There's a <laughs> tiny little sousson of plugin in amongst the real, but it's all real. But hey, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I'm not like a technophobe. I'll use, you know, whatever. The end result isn't about, it's what you get to, not how you get there, I believe. Right. Absolutely. And for you, does a guitar tone influence your writing in the sense you plug into an amp? Oh, it sounds bitch. And you hit that E chord and you're just like, oh, yeah, I could write something here. Yeah. Yeah. It still it still happens. Um, I get that. Still get that very visceral pleasure from plugging in a guitar into an amp and turning it up loud. It yeah. just still, you know, still works for me. I was talking to Tom Weber yesterday, and he wanted the, me to send you a big hug, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we, we were talking about your guitar tone, and he was just talking about how you're very meticulous, and you know what you <laughs> want, but when you get it, oh, does it sound good? Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I mean, people ask me, how do I do this? I'm not a very technical player, uh, and I don't have a great understanding of it's just a gut thing, mm -hmm. you know? I, I just go for like what what kind of gets gets me excited, I guess. Yeah, and, and especially you know when you're, when you're there with Mickey Curry doing his best Paul Cook. I mean, it's hard to be not into. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that all goes back to Jonesy, right? Like, how can you not play with you know Billy? You know yeah. Steve really well, and um, I got to work with him on a couple of records too. Man, he's he's got that thing too. It's Jonesy's right hand. The great a lot of great guitar players. It's all in the right hand. Wayne Kramer, right hand. Right. It's like, you know, Wayne Jonesy. Kramer. Wayne Kramer's got incredible, you know, a lot of the guitar plays you're drawn to this. You yeah. know, those guys have obviously stayed at home and played scales, probably when they should have been going out meeting girls. You know, it's like, I call them I call them the Whittly Whittly guys. Yeah, little Italy guys. And right. and it's great. And I, you know, I'm not a hater, but it's it's I never learned I never wanted to learn guitar, 
you know, in the same way somebody might learn the violin, you know, it's not a chore. It was meant to be a lifestyle uh, enhancer for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, you know, but, but that doesn't mean to say I don't take it seriously. I'm not passionate about it, but I, I didn't, I didn't want to become studious, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? At the end of the day, it's like Mitch and I, we always say yeah. the, the perfections are in the imperfections and it's yep. all about having a good time. Yeah, the bad, some of the bad notes, man. So what? You know, I mean, it's it, yeah. if it's if it sounds good, if it feels good, it's good. As long that's as you exactly. land, as long as you land on a right note, but after the bad <laughs> note, you're good. Yeah, but that's that's and, what made those early albums in the '70s very compelling. Because if you listen to any Black Sabbath or like, they're they're always playing in front of the beat. They're always making a mistake, and that's what makes it original. Now you listen to radio, and it's just all. It's all been sanitized yeah. and music shouldn't be sanitized. I mean, you know, that, and that's why where, where Mickey Curry comes in too, when you, when you did the cult thing, he's very organic and it's very down and, and it's, it's, it's the way it should be, you know? It's about swing. I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, Ian, the singer in the cult made a very good, uh, what I felt was a great observation many years ago. He just said, he said to me, you know, we're aiming our music from the waist down. And there's a lot of bands around. We, they seem to be aiming it from the waist up, you know, like with rock and roll, you know, it's from the waist down. It's it gets the girls going, yeah. you know, it's that's that's where you're aiming. It's it has that element to it. And I just think that music has become very sanitized. I think the, the ability to use technology has been a bit, you know, human nature is to make things easy. And so therefore people have gotten a little lazy mm. um you know and i'm certainly guilty of do i really need to play that chorus <laughs> four times i've just played it once really well yeah. can yeah. i just go make a cup of coffee and it'd be finished when i get back well then again you know look at mickey who worked with somebody like mutt lang imagine sitting there and working on something Ooh. for years <laughs> yeah mutt well mutt you know mutt was like the first guy right to kind of do that where it, it would just be layer after layer after layer of. But know, the results perfect. were there though. That incredibly the thing, the thing incredibly records, great records. Yeah. They make great records. I mean, I heard stories about how long it, the scrape on Highway to Hell, Ooh. the guitar scrape on the pause on Highway <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Hell. I heard some story, I don't know who the hell was throwing it around, but you know, four days to just get that one. Yeah. Man. You know, they, those stories were legendary. And also, you'd have to give him, like, your firstborn and a limb, you know, to get him to produce <laughs> get him. your record yeah. If he yeah. as well. Right. Well, I, I, to be honest, I you know, I was freaking the first time I had to work with my. I was thinking it's going to take me a, a week to get a hi-hat track, yeah. you know, for one song. But it didn't. We, we worked really quickly, actually. He kind of let me play through. I would do one or two takes. And there you go, drums are there. But then again... Pro Tools were kicking in at the time, so he could sort of fix and pa patch it together the way Little he needed Little did you it. know he went, in, he went in on the grid and took your hi-hat and put it on yeah. every... Yeah, yeah, but that's but that's okay. You know, I can still tell people I played on those Mutt Lang records, you know, because yeah. uh, I, I was in the room at the time slam, slamming hi-hats and snare drums. But um, <laughs> yeah, those guys, you know, they're, and that's kind of where we are now with everyone. You know, it's all Velveeta cheese now. You know, they just sort of blend and mix and blend. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is why we'll never have the sound like those '70s albums and those no. '80s albums. That just, no. just real quick, uh, Billy, on on the color sound, and then also with right. the Sonic Temple. Did did you go in real quick and and get the sort of, you know, one two three takes and we're good, or or did you labor over every sound and every punch and every? No, no. That I think that's where technology is good. I, I think that if you, you if you go for spontaneity and somebody makes a mistake, you can fix that one mistake. Yeah. Mm. You know, rather than right. having to like go for seventeen more takes where you lose the energy because of an error, you you can you know I think that's where the technology can be your friend. Let alone the amount of my life that I've gotten back not waiting for the tape to rewind. <laughs> you know, I think I've just I've added almost as much lifespan as yeah. when I quit smoking. I think I'm, you know, right. you know Bob, Bob Rock saying, hey, let me splice that together. Right. Oh, and God. A, yeah. a day and a half later, there's a there's a three minute track. Right? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob was incredible. He yeah. had so much stuff going on. Yeah. He mm. fully he fully he was like 
at the tipping point of what you could achieve prior to computers, wasn't he, Mickey? He yeah, was like, absolutely. Bob yeah. took it to the nth degree. Yeah. Um, it was all organic, right? You you had to set up mics and get the sounds. Like I mean, there was there yeah. was like samplers at the time where you could replace snares and. But Bob's no, records Bob, were pretty Bob's, organic. Yeah, Bob's records were all mics in the room, you know, and then. Yeah, Ed. We, when we did we, the track Ed on Sonic Temple with the Cult was done. We had the cellist live. Yeah. We had both studios in, and we laid it down live. There was the band, and there was the the. I think it was a it was a quartet or a quintet. I can't remember. There was. And we and Bob did it all, you know, the right way, old school. But he also used to push once he got it recorded. He wasn't scared of miles of analog tape winding around the corridors. Yeah, he would spend hours on that stuff, man. Just. Uh, but, but what you know, was he doing? Got... Like he was mixing, like it was EQing, and like trying to get like a like get like a guitar part to pop through the mix. Like, all right, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a good, I'll give you a good example of Bob Rock on that. The, the, I could never get the guitar solo on a song called Sweet Soul Sister right. Mm -hmm. And the, Andy, only the, the, the only version we had, right for me, and the only version we had was a cassette of a guide lead solo because it had been erased. The guide solo had been erased. It was one I just threw down when we were just laying down the backing tracks. Mm. Bob found a cassette of it. So the actual recorded lead guitar solo on Sonic Temple is off a cassette that he ran alongside the rest of the recording and turned it up and mixed it in. Wow. I just couldn't get, I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, you know, that was the degree style. in which somebody had a reference cassette. They'd sent yeah. them this reference and said, this is the song. This is a rough guide of it. Who knows what, you know, anyway. And that's what's Ooh. the actual sound. Really? Wow, that's amazing. That's that was a, a little that, true. That is true amazing. Story. Just, um, let me just get you back to color sound for a second. Okay, it's been sure. over 20 years since the last one. Yes. What sort of compelled you? Is this sort of like, hey, it's COVID, we got nothing to do, let's let's do this? Or was there always a plan to get to a second album? Because good oh, decision. Oh, okay, no, 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 that's a good question. No, it's a good question. We, we've we always been friends um, and we we, I've, I was spending more time back in the UK and, and this, this whole um, Colour Sound second album was conceived pre-COVID and consummated during COVID. <laughs> so I just sent Mike a riff I had laying around that wasn't going to get used for the cult and he sent something back right away and we had that song Paradise and we just thought, oh, this is fun. You know, I was in England for a few months and um, we got together in some freezing cottage in Wales, true, and uh, not unlike Led Zeppelin, who got together in a cottage and wrote in Wales and wrote songs about California. Um, we got together in a little frozen <laughs> cottage in Wales, and I don't know what but I think we wrote songs about Wales. Um, um, and that's what, how we did it. We did th seriously three days, in, and it was almost like a cliche of like the sea crashing against the thing, and like a wood burning fire, and guitars, and wow, mug, lots of mugs of tea. You know, yeah. vital British rock and roll ingredient. Now, now th yeah. this, this album is laughing, but he knows yeah, it's because I know it's true. Yeah, <laughs> but but this, this album has such a great vitality. Do, do you now look at this and say, hey, you know what? Maybe we should make another one in two or three years. Or where do, where do you see the future oh, for the project? I, I, it, it, it's it's um, it was easy to do. We actually wrote another song after this album was finished. We got to, we wrote another song called The Wild that's actually could have gone on the album. It's pretty good. Hmm. Um, Japanese so bonus song, track. Yeah, it's like it'll be a bonus track. But I think me and Mike are easy. You know, we, we, we can get together and write stuff pretty easily. You know, that we're, we're a good um, we're a good working unit in that sense. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, if we did another one, it it remains fun, and it was a quick thing, you know. I think I think with with as Mickey has been in you know a band for many many years, it it, it, it the challenges become greater if you you know in your tenth twelfth album working with another songwriting partner, the challenges are different. You know, me and Mike have made two records in twenty years, and I think that you can keep a bit of the romance is still alive. You know, if you're mm -hmm. not having to do it um, uh, in more frequency. So, you know, but I'd love to do stuff with Mike, you know, which doesn't really, you know, hopefully it doesn't in any way diminish the call in, in anybody's eyes. You know, that's a, a very different relationship with Ian and, you know, 
Um, it's it's always considered to be an uh, a plus, you know, yeah. just something done in the right spirit of rock and roll because there just aren't enough rock and roll records being made anymore. Yeah, and, and this is a great one. Uh, uh, Mickey, I'm just going to ask you this. You know, you, you do work with Hollow Notes. You do stuff with Brian Adams. And then you get to the cult. What was that like walking in the first day and hearing Billy and seeing Billy and going, oh, OK, well, what was that like for you? Well, first thing I did was ask Bob to change my diaper. Because <laughs> was, you know, <laughs> can you please help me with this? Uh, you know, I was a nervous wreck. You're scared stiff. You know, I was such a big fan. And, um, you know, Ian and Billy both, man, they're, you know, they're these legendary guys. You, you just don't want to be the weak link in the chain. You don't want to screw up their record. You want to, you know, you just want to play good. And play it right. must be hard that Mickey it is, to walk but... in because I've never really been a session player mm. so I've never had that experience of when anybody's ever hired me mm. they want me to be me yeah. on their thing yeah so well, that... I've never had that's the difference yeah well with your with with you guys it, what was great was you were both so nice and kind and Jamie as well and you know I had mm. worked with Bob before so that made it okay because Bob would just reassure me like this is going to be okay just play and do do what they ask you to do. Billy's yeah. got lots of ideas and just stick with them, man, because they're great. So <laughs> that's what we did. And this you know, is... it, it worked out really well. That rec I get more people asking me about uh the cult records than anything. I mean, yeah. they want to know those stories, you know, they want to hear about how we did it and how it was done and how we got the sounds and yeah. where did that stuff come from? Well, well I got a question it's, because it's really you know great. I, I'm I love that. Mm. I, I'm not really familiar though. It's like, Billy, you mentioned something earlier talking about you know, like having the drummer's got to have a certain swing to him. Is that why you guys decided to bend the Eric Singer tracks and bring Mickey in? He just didn't have that sort of swing, that I, feel. I mean, I can only give you my honest opinion. I mean, Eric is an amazing drummer and yeah. he's been an amazing drummer for Kiss. Yep, yeah. I agree. But you know, amazing, but it's kind of horses for courses. And I think funny thing, what... I have an Eric Singer snare drum right next to me. There you oh, go. Right. <laughs> did you know? Check it did, out. did you? Yeah, yeah see? That was did totally you know... random, by the way. Like, right. <laughs> oh, you got it right there. Oh, it yeah. just happened. I was that. showing somebody else, like, on I was I had a Zoom meeting like the other day and I was showing it off and I had it next to me and it's kind of yeah. like... I just happen to have this. <laughs> Pull it out of my sleeve. <laughs> you know, me and him have the same birthday and we're the same age. Mm. which is 800 years old. Um, <laughs> exactly the same birthday. Eric, no, Eric style. I think Bob felt that we needed more of a swing. It might have been coming from Ian mm. vocally, you know, because uh, there's a big connection between what the drums are doing and what the vocal is feeling yeah. with his meter. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously with Led Zeppelin and, and, and the, 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 the Pillars of Rock and ACDC, the guitar riff must be served. You know, Ooh. it's it's the riff is the the mount, and then the drums combine with the riff to create this thing. The bass does what it has to do to help, mm -hmm. and then the vocalist hopefully does something meaningful on top. And you know, Bosch, you've got rock rock and roll music. It's not complicated if you get it right. You know, um, but but in in the instance of the call, it was very guitar driven, and we must serve the riff. But make a song, you know, a song that yeah. he, he said, that that was the, the thing. And I, I think Mickey's just the backbeat and the swing. I, I I think Mickey's far more qualified than me to say this, but I believe there's more of an emphasis on swing with British drummers than American drummers. I, I, I having spent a lot of time in the states, I found a lot of guys who would kind of take all the more obvious elements of what John Bonham did and not really understand what he was trying to play and what John Bonham learned. Yeah. And that was, I actually, and I am gonna name drop now, Eric Clapton told me, <laughs> you might have heard of him, suggested before Sonic Temple to my manager that that guitar player in this call should go and listen to some blues guitar players before he does his next record. And I did. What and did you, you might not be able what to did you tell listen it, to? But it was, um, uh, you know, all the Johnsons, Mm -hmm. You know, all the family of Johnsons. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> and I rest. All the Johnsons. All the, Johnson. all the, jo all the Johnsons. Dwayne. And, uh, yeah, all of them. And, <laughs> That's really funny. I just did a little bit of research. Me, yeah, we did. But but that was kind of... Um, yeah, yeah. Well, he'd heard electric, and he kind of got... A lot of the musicians, the, the older, quote-unquote, musicians who might have felt threatened by punk, 
had survived punk and a lot of guys you know for it, that i can say for it, sure like sammy hagar robert plant Eric Clapton, they were very supportive of the cult when we did Electric, even though we were kind of ham-fistedly trying to rock in the best way we could with the help of Rick Rubin. You know, we were all just trying to bring real rock and roll back in the best way we could. Um, you know, a lot of those guys related to it and we got a lot of support from mm. a lot of guys like that. Uh, uh, who were very complimentary and helpful to us because we were just trying our best, you know? And then Nikki kind of stepped in and we just wanted to up, up the game a little bit with Sonic Temple, you know, that was all. Just, you know, take some elements from the album yeah. before Electric that we might have lost and mix it up, you know, the Love album. And mm -hmm. you, bring also, in, uh, you bring in a Mickey Curry, Curry, you're going to up the game. That's for sure. That is for oh, sure. And it... it the, the songs weren't as good, but Mickey's playing, and in fact, the sounds on the next album, Ceremony, Ooh. that we did that wasn't as commercially successful, were actually great. I love that. It's record. a really strong album, sonically. <laughs> Charlie, yeah. Drayton, Charlie Drayton was, was just unbelievably good on that record. Yeah, yeah crazy. Very Charlie different. But, yeah. You know, we had some good times. We did another album. It, it didn't do as well commercially, but, but it sounds amazing. I think I probably got the best guitar sound I ever got on that record. It's a and great to be record. fair, you know, those records, they don't sound like a product of the time at all. You slap on those albums and they sound just fresh as ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what the, that's the great thing about it. They, they didn't seem to get into that whole 80s, whatever, Lynn drum, keyboard, all that nonsense stuff. They, they just made a rock record and it still sounds like a rock it's, record 20 years later. You know, Fire, Firewood yeah. comes on in the car. And it just explodes out of the radio. Yep. It's a such it's just a great single. Oh, 72,000 tracks of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> good for you, man. Because you know, you you played 71,000 guitar riffs. Yeah, that. right. <laughs> <At> really? <once. laughs> really, Billy? Was there a high track count on that? Oh, okay. and then the next thing is so I've seen a Bob. So Bob, um, <laughs> how am I gonna play this live? There's just me. And he went, oh, that's your problem. Figure it out. <laughs> Literally. Oh, that's not my problem. Yeah. I produce records. Yeah, right. I'm making a record. Leave me alone. Yeah, leave oh, me that's alone. Funny. That's funny. Right. Well, hey, Color Sound, July 16th, available wherever music sold. Make sure you pre-order it. This, this record's phenomenal. But the riff on, like, yeah. start a fire and, like, action. Eye to eye. Uh, is it eye? Yeah. Actions just needs to go right to radio, by the way. Like, just send eye it. Eye for an eye, sorry. <laughs> Now, light, lightning strikes is, is definitely a single. By the way, who plays drum on this? Who, who what's the band on this? Is it a band or is it studio musicians? Well, well do it all yourselves or it, it's a drummer. It's played with Mike. His name's Smiley Bernard, and he's played. He, he originally played with Joe Strummer in the Mescaleros when oh. Joe had that band, mm -hmm. and he's played with a lot of different people. He's played with Mike a lot lately, um, and he's just kind of. He was one of those things where I wanted to try and first, we, we were a bit worried because we didn't want to make this like, oh, this is like a Mike Peters alarm record with Billy Duffy on guitar. So we tried it out and it felt great. So I didn't overcomplicate it. And Smiley played great um, and had a lot of spirit and a lot mm -hmm. of good. He's a musical drummer. Um, some drummers are very not musical and, and that's not meant as an offence, offensive remark. It's just the, 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 the hey, certain- none, take, none taken. Yeah, no, no. They say <laughs> no offense to the drummer on the screen, but yeah, you know, but come on. Drum, no, but there are different styles of drummers in the way there's a million different types of guitar players. That's why they're at the back. Like me. That's why they're at well, the back yeah, of the stage. Some of them are like metronomic and they play the song, you know, and they, they really just feel it's all about the pocket and the backbeat. And then, you know, all the drummers are like the bigger the fill, the bigger the bill. You know, it's just kind of a, you know, like yeah. kick the wa kick the wa washing machine downstairs. Watch what I um, can do. Yeah. So, so I think, and that just comes possibly with experience too, though, you know, less is more. And when mm -hmm. you're, young, you're eager, you want to show everybody what you can do and mm -hmm. how fast you can do it. And then, you know, I won't even go into the two buffaloes on the hillside store, anecdotal story. <laughs> but Mickey would know that story. The old buffalo and the young buffalo and the herd female buffalo story. Mm -hmm. But we'll leave that one alone. Yeah. Um, Google it. Um, so... <laughs> that's kind of where we're at you know and color sounds the same thing it's just as kind of a straight ahead rock and roll record made by a couple of good old chums from england and wales 
And, uh, you know, just for people that like are predisposed to liking that kind of stuff, you know, it, it was enjoyable to make you two guys enthusiasm for it is uh, is infectious. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know? I, I'm actually going to go pre-order it. I mean, I have the, the link, but I, I want a physical product on this because this is a keeper. It's definitely a keeper. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah. we must we, we must own. And Jeremy's going to go buy the vinyl. Yes, I am. Oh, I want the double yeah. LP gatefold, slap it on first. Listen oh, and you get, you get a pen of Mike Peters on the pants and that too, I think. Oh, hey now, hey now. Yeah, yeah, we, we thought we'd do a twist on the original School's Out album sleeve where you open a school desk and you get a pair of small panties. Well, we thought we'd throw in a pair of uh, our tidy whiteies. <laughs> oh, that's great. You added an effect. You should have went, to, you should have went back. And we to thought studio. that was a terrible idea. <laughs> you should go back to the studio where you record it. Take, take the records and put them next to the fireplace to get like the authentic studio scent on them. Oh, yeah. that, that place was incredible. Oh, I think there's a photograph of where me and Mike wrote most of this stuff. And it literally could be under the Wikipedia page of, you know, uh, strange British homely recording studio, creative space type environment. Right. You're going to California song here. Yeah, you know, that's it was, great. Nice. That's it, awesome. It was almost like some like a Miss Marple film of rock and roll, you know. That's, that's great. It, it, Just it uh, amazing. Before we wrap up, what, what did you think of our little uh, reunion with Mickey Curry today? I mean, isn't this terrific? Two I, of the greatest in one chat. One of the, I do remember one thing, but we laugh a lot, don't we, Mickey? We might yeah. not see each other for ten years, but it's, it's always a good laugh. It's always good, man. Always, you know. They miss that. Fondest memories of that with, with a lot of us. A lot of fun. Yeah, that's yep. the way to do it, man. If it ain't fun, don't do it. So. Yep. A little good old family reunion today. Yeah, this is awesome. yeah, yeah. well, nice, thanks for that. Thanks for that. You yeah. take care, Mickey Curry. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All Good right. You. You've fallen off the back of your drum seat yet. No, Because no, I, but I'm going to be 112 this year, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Mickey, I don't know if you guys know, you might have seen, if you've ever seen Mickey from the side, his particular mannerism on the kit <laughs> is he sits very, very, like if he was in yeah, a car, very he lovely. plays drums like guys ride a low rider car. <laughs> they put the seat as far back as possible. That's it. Yeah. And I Isn't just your... don't even know how he reaches the drums. Yeah, That's Mickey, his your thing. Is your snare still hitting like your, your it's almost like yeah. your chin, your yeah. snare. Like, yeah, I got I to gotta put, I have to wear a mouthpiece, you know, the football guy. <laughs> 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 he's back he's in the next room his yeah. ass is in the next room yeah <laughs> you just see arms underneath the screen of brian oh. yeah. now, now more importantly when are we going to get you two recording something together again because you've got this great tone from the guitar and you've got this great drummer that it just needs that, that music needs to match again it needs to you need to marry it again we just have to be in the same room at the same time if we can get that going yeah, we could do that. I think we, we could, could pull that. that off before Absolutely. we, you know, I think we still yeah, all you need is Pro Tools. Well. Yeah. You Pro know, Tools and email. Tools. Pro Tools. <laughs> yeah. Tell that. What is that? Is that, some, is that French? What is that? Pro Tools. Hey, le, le Pro Tools, as we say in Montreal. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean I'm going to have to use my Hotmail account? <laughs> or your AOL, perhaps. Yeah, right? yeah, AOL. yeah. For, for, my, what, for my MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you were born when MySpace existed, Jeremy. Uh, I remember MySpace. Okay, and Mitch, for the record, you would not have been in my top eight. All right. <laughs> uh, there we All go. Right. But right, uh, folks, uh, Color Sound uh, coming out July 16th. It yep. is phenomenal. Absolutely yeah. it's a rock phenomenal. It's record for rock and roll people. That's what it is. If you're a rocker and you like rock and roll, guitar, that's what the, it's what the record's about. Yep. yep. And Lightning Strike has to be a single. I'm just telling you that. That's it. Okay. It's my okay. advice. I'm going actions. Okay. That's mine. So there you go. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll see you That's later, you. guys. Good to see Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks, pleasure. Bye, Bye Mickey. Thank out. you for coming. Bye-bye.